So we have a fa we have two faces and we also have a vase. So if you look at the white shapes, what do you see? You see the the faces, the profiles. And if you look at the black shape, you see a vase. What I always point out is how interesting it is for you to choose your brain, how it could just switch on and off, on and off. And you can look at a vase or you can look at the faces. Now, the key to understand this is when you're looking at the black as the shape, and I want you to do this now, I want you to stare at it. You look at that black vase, you immediately realize, oh, wow, the white becomes the space. And this is what I call negative space. Now, if you're looking at the profiles, so you're looking at the white shape now and you're seeing that face, notice how immediately the black becomes the space or the negative space in this case. But what is interesting is that we could choose to draw these very simple shapes. So here's my first challenge to you. This is my page. Can you draw this shape? Now, do you see where on the page that shape is? I'm going to go ahead and zoom it in so you could see it a little bit better. So remember, look where it is on the page. So I'm going to try to kind of keep it in the same quadrant, in the same space um, as proportional to the page. So I'm not going to draw it up here. I'm going to go right about here, kind of in the middle and right about down here. Uh, and all I'm going to focus on is... How do I read that? Now, what is this thing? I don't know. But I want to see how close to when you don't identify what you're drawing, how close can you get to the actual small curvatures, angles, distances, and relationships within that shape. So go ahead and draw it. And I'm going to go ahead and use my color pencil. Now, one of the tips that I favor here is the blind contour drawing. What is that? You keep your eyes glued on the reference and then you simply trace by every three to five seconds taking just a quick, a tiny little quick glimpse over to your paper to confirm if you're following the actual shape, angle, direction of the thing you're looking at and because this thing we're looking at we don't know what it is it should match really easy now notice that I went all the way on the right side I'm gonna go back up and I'm gonna I more comfortably I'm gonna work the thickness the proportion of it from up down from the top to the bottom again so notice how some of these very subtle coca-cola bottle shape type curves I could, my brain tries to make sense of them, but there's nowhere to go other than what it actually, the direction of it. So if I'm not looking at it, I know immediately I will realize if I am making up information. Now by making up information, we could just draw this super fast there it is. So it is a lot easier. And I'm going to go ahead and just fill it up just very quickly. As best as I can. I don't want to make it. I want to make this a very quick, just 10 minute exercise, kind of a warm up. I always like doing warm up, warm up exercises before we actually get to draw. So this would be my first shape. So let's go to shape number two. I'm going to go ahead, and just so you see the relationship on the page, it, it probably starts right about here. I'm just going to give myself a little marker, and then I'm going to zoom it in. So another thing we begin to see here is, huh, it kind of looks like a map of something. And that sometimes makes it easier for us. Sometimes I see a, you know, like a falling, like a diving fox like a fox that's diving into water, I'm right at the ear. And these little things sometimes make it a little easier to figure out. The key here is to realize what is a vertical, what is a horizontal, and 
how are all the other lines that are not vertical or horizontal relating to that, to, to 90 degrees vertical, 90 degrees horizontal? How are all these little valleys and peaks come into play? And we do our best. That's what, what, that's what drawing is all about. I'm going to go ahead and fill up, fill it in. That way I could see it a little bit better. And you will be the judge. Does this look anything close? Maybe it should have been a little thinner. The proportion of it should have been a little longer maybe in order for it to, to be exact or more accurate. Okay, so I think we're ready to add one more shape to it. So let me go ahead and go here and let me just add that one. So there's another shape. Now it's here at the bottom on the other side. And I think your brain, you're too smart for this. You're like, aha, I know what this is already. The moment that happens, beware. Because what you've been doing so far is you've been drawing negative space. Now when you realize what you are drawing, the tendency is to take shortcuts. Because we assume we know the thing that we're drawing. And I'm just going to go ahead and make this kind of rectangular here and just fill it in. And that is the biggest trick. Tricking your brain to forget the symbol of the thing you're drawing and actually focus on the shapes that are there in front of it. So working at your own pace, I know I did this a little extra fast. I'm going to go ahead and add one more. Let's go ahead and add this one. And now you, uh oh, okay, now I really, really see this. I could see where this one begins. Can I still, my question to you is, can you still draw the black shape without it th throwing you off because you recognize what the white shape is. And little by little, again, we're doing this extremely blind because I'm trying to trick you all the way through, but you probably know already what this is. So let me go ahead and add all of it. I'm going to add that one and that one. And you'll realize, okay, so this one comes up to here. So this is way up here. And I'm just going to go ahead and do it here. It's not going to be the best rendering of what we now know is a little kid. But it goes to show that just focusing, and that's what we're going to do for the rest of the class, focusing on the simplicity of what are negative shapes. And there it is. Ta-da! We were looking at this little piece first. And if I take it out away now, it is the trick it's always there, but somehow we ignore some of that information. So what I want you to really focus on today is forgetting about this, the image, and I'll put it a little more opacity so you can see it. Somehow tricking your brain to forget about this to be able to see that. And that is how you're going to want to draw these um these figures. Now, when it comes to clothing, there's going to be a lots of... Notice how you have, especially over here, lots of little creases and curvatures. Once we go into the figure, it'll get even more interesting as well. Uh, but how to simplify some of that? And I know we dealt with shapes here, but what I want to do now is this. We're going to go to page two. 
I want you to go so slow, as slow as you can. I want you to put the pencil, pen, whatever you have down, and I want you to pick a spot. I am gonna stop, start right at the top over here, like right at the center at the top of the head, and I am going to slowly begin to draw the silhouette, the contour, and the idea here, I will repeat it over and over and over, is for you to figure out a way to see the face and the vase at the same time, because it is that important. The shape of the face and the vase as you develop this, in order for you to really confirm the information that you're looking at. And there are tons of other clues, and we'll go over those as well. And those clues, hmm, I'm already familiar with this one because we already drew it. Sometimes we need to zoom in a little in order to see it better. But for example, the space between some of those elements, the relationship, meaning I know that this little shape here is going to somehow line up with, when I get to this area, it's going to line up level with this one right over here. And it's going to be that thickness that, it, that I'm going to be looking for in order to be in the right proportion. So as we continue, it's literally like going for a walk. You're just following the trail. How long ago? Can I can see you. Can you hear me? Okay, you're back. Okay, I'm keeping an eye on the screen on you guys, and when I see you... Is everyone still with me? Yeah, we lost you for... For a few seconds? 30 seconds. You're back. Okay. So, as we continue here, the one thing I really, really want you to focus is... This is an exercise in observation. So the best way I could put this is your eyes are going for a walk. So your eyes, as they move through these lines, through all these shapes, the slower you move through these lines, the better. And just give your hand the time and the pace so they can sink. Eye with hand. And all of a sudden, you'll begin to see these shapes way easier. The way they relate to each other. Some of these, for example, feet, shoes, they are in what's called foreshortening. And they may look so weird right now. But when we add a couple of lines inside, and we will get to that, and we just put them in the right place, just like we are with what we're doing now, all of a sudden they'll become, oh wow, look at that, pretty good for a foreshortened shoe. So it is try really trusting, observing, and slowing yourself down, watching, And you see how it's coming together? So this should be, and I am going a little bit slower. I asked you to go a little bit slower. And there we go. Matched up with the other side. And you can always give yourself somewhat clues. We know where we're headed. So hoping that I want to line this up with other drawing methods, which we will look at. I find that this is one of the most help helpful. So as I slow my line down, I begin to look at relationships. So I don't want this line to curve here when I know this one lines up just a little below. So right here, I would give myself one of those kind of endpoints, goal points to get there. As I get too close here, I know that the middle of my head, so I'm beginning to see the entire thing, would put me right about here for the end of this line. And as it gets more and more complex, what you want to do is simplify the thing you're looking at. 
And that actually, for just a single continuous contour line, can actually do a really, really good job of defining the thing you're looking at. Now, it we are not looking at what I would call realistic drawing here. We're gonna do a little more of an illustration. So look at look at me go inside using the same system into some of the lines that I'll see just like I did on the outside to kind of begin to develop some of the space or the elements that define, and I'm doing this a little too fast. Usually you would take a little more time to make sure you're analyzing. And now we're dealing with not skin or hair, but cotton, I guess, different fabrics. You can go a little more into what the original question we had early on, which is what is essential to define this in figure and clothing, in style, as the defining elements. What you need to put in this drawing, trying to follow the same map here, and very simply put, and I, again, we're just Simplifying the line, we could do this so, car not cartoonish, but shifting the line in order to give ourselves just enough information to develop the figure. Now, one step that we're going to go, and I'm going to go ahead and do it now. Here is where I would invite you to, well... I wanted to play with not just the line and the shapes, but maybe some of the patterns. So I could do this with color pencil. And I could even do some of these lines. I could have shifted my technique to do some of these lines that I'm seeing in here with different mediums. For example, here I use color pencil. Or not just one, but I'll use one for the lights and one for some of the shadow areas. So I'm giving you just a couple of hints on what we can do with this in order for you to begin to take it into a different direction, your own, hopefully your own style. So here I'm just gonna kinda give it a little bit of a quick feel of gray. I'm gonna go to a nice blue and hoping that In terms of design, we try to capture we need a little bit of maybe a darker gray. And again, I could do those lines. So I'm working on this one really, really fast. The idea what I want for the next series of drawings will most likely be 15 to 20, maybe 25 minutes. Now, I know I just went with blue for the hair. That's fine. We could do that. But I could have just as easy gone with a little bit of watercolor. And I, I know I'm using sketch paper, not watercolor paper. But that would be the option to use different papers with different techniques. And we're going to try to develop different ways of approaching the figure. Let's see if just a little bit of very quick strokes that will give us the essential. So this is just one quick way. Um, some of you may be interested to maybe skip the color pencil, maybe skip the pencil, go straight to ink. So I'm going to do that one next. So there's a lot less negative space within the figure. There's definitely more shapes to deal with outside of the figure. Now, 
remember, what I'm asking you to do is stylize this. Now, you've heard of, you know, fashion design where it's super long and then you can stretch the figure. Um, you can actually, if you are willing to, simplify it to somewhat of an anime kind of um, style or whatever style you're working that is yours. Uh, modify any of those. For most of us, we tend to do the, no, I want it to be more realistic. Me, I'm going to be working more in what I call an illustration style. What you would see kind of in magazines and newspapers, that kind of thing. Um, how am I going to do this one? I'm going to switch over to a quick pencil sketch. So I'm going to use a 2B mechanical pencil. And I'm going to give myself, this time, I'm going to give myself just a quick, what I would call, structure. So I'm going to give myself just kind of a bubble. So I'm using markers. And I have to, I have to keep these lines a little lighter for the drawing to, to be successful. But I am going to make them darker so you could see them. Because I could see on, on camera, you can't see them. So what am I trying to do? I might have to do this. Let's see if is this too dark. Let's go with this one here. There we go. Just make it a little darker. Although if you are doing this, you want to go ultra light at first step. At the first step. So what am I going to do? I'm going to look at where my eye line, my eye line is, and my center line is. What is that? Which way are the line, the lines that point in the direction? where my eye, nose, and mouth is looking towards. It's definitely not looking forward. It's looking almost profile. I want to look at some neck. I look for the big joints. So we're in relationship to my head, I'm going to look for the shoulders. I'm going to look for the torso. If there's any tilt or angling of the torso, I'm going to make sure I put it in. I'm going to look for the hip. Now I look at the shoulder and the hip and they're kind of lining up here. So I'm going to look at this hip and it's definitely a little lower. So there's a little what's called contraposto. This hip is higher than this one. And we'll see it as well when we line it up with the knee. Which knee do you think is higher or lower? It is pretty obvious this one's lower, right? And it's also right there we see our negative space. There's a little gap. Now this knee, I'm going to line it up with the ankle. And there's my foot. So this very basic armature is going to allow me... So I'm looking at the elbow and the wrist and just adding a little kind of a mitten for the hand there. Doing the same on the other side. So looking at just some of these angles, how it's a lot higher than this hip. And same thing, just a little mitten for that hand. So just so you can see it a little bit better, there's my armature. You can see all of the major joints. And at this point, I could bring an eraser and adjust and shift things that I think are not where they're supposed to be. And you want to make sure you're lining up your head, shoulders, hips, and if this is off, then this is the moment to correct it. You're looking at these type of angles, and you're also looking at, for example, the angle of the shoulders. Is it higher, lower, or level? Hips, higher, lower, or level? Same thing with the knees. This one's higher. And if so, how much higher? There's an angle to it. So we could actually stretch that and exaggerate it, and then we begin to lose a little bit, but it becomes stylized. So you want to play with that. I could actually make this figure. I was talking about the curvature. So we don't see the spine because it's a frontal figure. But I could add a lot of curve to the torso here. And then that's going to push the hip bone as well. So that's how we stylize our figure. Once I feel comfortable with this, I'm going to go to my ink pens. And I'm going to use a micron for this. And I know I'm going to simplify the information a lot. Kind of like I did with the first one. So I'm going to select a point to start. 
This has a little bit of too much information for me. So I'm going to save that for later. And I'm going to start, let's say, here at the shoulder. And I want to, same way, now that I have somewhat of a guide, a map, what I want to do is look for that negative space. Now I want to make sure I have a good read. And I'm going into some of the lines that I also read. Not just as negative space, but also going into the figure. So you read it as the outside negative space, but also going into the figure. So here I could choose going straight down on my contour and what I don't want to do is lose track of where I am remember going for a walk here I want to make sure since my ink lines are now final pretty much I want to make sure that I keep track of my angles and some of my smaller lines may become a little simpler so a lot of these wrinkles and, you know, the blue jean kind of stuff going on here. I could simplify that. Do I need it? So the question is, is it essential? I could add a little more curvature to my figure. I could lengthen. I could make the legs longer. I could play with a little bit of what's going on here in terms of tapering of the fabric, the jeans. I like drawing these shoes. These shoes are fun to draw. So I'm looking negative space within. Try to capture some of these lines. Here's where it gets a little tricky. And again, I love doing these in ink because you are committed to the line. So you really have to know how to pace yourself, how to read that face face. Anytime you have any doubts, what am I looking for? How do I define this? Look at face face which means just reading of the negative space. And you will be at least in the right track. And it works outside and inside of your subject. So I'm gonna keep going up. Some of these diagonal lines, they're the tricky ones. So we wanna confer, confirm that we have somewhere where we're going, sort of a GPS, I call it. That way you can follow the line. And have somewhat of a sense. So it's even easier for you to pace yourself. And this method of reading negative space the method of reading negative space i believe is absolutely key to trusting yourself with drawing trusting your lines because it is inevitable you see it you have to trust it and just in the process of observing and drawing your lines you have the immediate answer so see here for example i'm entering an area where we all know what this is so to forget what this is and just focus on the negative space of a hand and i, I didn't want to use that word because it makes it even tougher it is extremely important to kind of blank out of the way we are used to seeing things in order for you to see the shapes that you're looking for. In this case, the negative space shapes. And it could feel awkward, weird. No, that's not right. But because we're looking at shapes, three-dimensional shapes, in 2D, 
it should simplify it just a little bit. Now these are fingers bending. So see foreshortening of hands, foreshortening of feet and shoes and even the, the full figure could be moments where you second guess yourself. And you may do that thing that I urge you not to, which is make up information. Now I see this line that goes straight up. Negative space, following it up. And somehow, it is about ignoring the things you should not be worried about at different moments in your drawing and focusing on those easiest, simplest things that will deliver a quality essential basically shapes that are working together just just like in a puzzle one little piece could say a lot but when you put all those pieces together in the right place it's a beautiful picture. So piece by piece, the puzzle comes together. Here we're, again, we get into trouble because it is a matter of decision. What kind of line is essential here? How many lines can I get away with to say everything I need to say here without having to overdo it? And it is very tricky. It is very tricky. Here I'm trying to simplify as much as I can. And we have a lot of smiling people. I didn't think about that when I selected these images. And smiling people are very difficult. Mouths with teeth. Drawing and painting them. It is too much information. Just with expression alone. But this could all be simplified because I may be taking this a little bit further than I intended in terms of line when I could easily be solving some of these issues. And we have a beautiful, just a beautiful line here, the neck that could come into play because I could be solving a lot of this with color. So let me go to my watercolor and when it comes to color and line, this is, this is the exercise. This is the beginning. I just want to show you what I hope over the next four weeks you will get so comfortable at. And you can pre-plan your drawing before you even put one line on the paper. You'll know how many lines because you'll know how your color is going to work with those lines. that it'll be just almost too easy. So I'm adding a little bit of a soft beige color instead of this cream white that we have here and maybe some, some of that shadow. I'm gonna go to some different yellows here. Somewhat of a yellow ochre. Kind of play with this for the hair. And you could literally, the idea for these is to get so loose, so expressive that you'll begin to push this into a style that will be recognizable as your own style. Let me just go ahead and add a little bit of, I'm using cadmium red and a warm yellow here to create a little bit of a skin tone. And you could do this with just a variety of techniques. And as I mentioned, any coloring that you feel comfortable with, that's what I want you to work with.
Now, do I need to incorporate, bring in some of this background? That's up to you. That that would begin to push it into a different... See, for me, this little red line there is kind of important. And we have another one here that I haven't drawn in. There's a nice little band that I put in here. And then these pretty much starts coming together. And because I'm working with watercolor, obviously I'm going to have to allow a little bit of time for some of these to really begin to work well in terms of technique. So when if I look if I'm looking at layering colors, I'm going to need to allow the time that it's going to take for those colors to just dry a little further, a little more. And now I begin to get a little smaller, a little more complex. Looking for a few shadows, a little bit of these darker areas. And I don't want to overdo them, but that's going to be a key for a successful finished not many, but I'm going to add them here, some of these shadows, because we do have that very light sweater color. And just a little bit of a darker blue to create somewhat of a shadow or darker value here in the pants. And then if you begin to look at textures and you want to make sure that jeans look like jeans, or cotton or vel you know uh, cashmere looks like cashmere well that's going to be the decision on huh what would be the ideal technique for me to convey that information now i can go back i want to make sure this is fully fully dry because i could go back and add just a little bit more information here I'm second guessing. I might want to go with a smaller brush. And you'll see how easily you can just add a few touches, in this case, watercolor, of a little bit of just a few variations of color. And just that, exploring what is the technique that you feel more most comfortable with. And there we have it. Now a fuel extra because we talk with we can talk about mixed media. In this case, it's ink and watercolor. I could bring in some pencil lines to kind of enhance some of the look. That could be considered mixed media. Just an interesting way to bring out, bring out some of these essential elements, essential information. And as I said, you could deal with the background with just a couple of lines to insinuate, you know, the space. So there we have it. There's another approach for figure and clothing. So these are going to get a little more um, challenging. And let's do, let's see if we have time for one more. Okay, so for this one, I am going to use a brush, and this is kind of a liner brush, a script brush, they call it as well, and I'm just going to be dipping it in ink, and what am I going to be looking for? I'm going to be looking for that just expressive line, looking for that negative space, and it is risky. This is almost like using an ink pen, but 
the risk is you have a lot more chance for sometimes accidents, I guess, would be the thing we think of. I think the opposite way. I think really interesting, happy accidents um, that we could use to our advantage. So the line quality, it is a little tricky in order to, if you haven't practiced this, it does take a little bit of testing it out. And you may want to just, you know, test out different lines on on different areas of your paper. You just do different strokes, different directions, different pressures, different speeds. So you get a good sense of what that brush can deliver for you. Different types of dashes and dots and thicknesses. So as I'm familiar with this brush, I could actually just almost with com extreme confidence, trust this brush to almost finish what I begin to see as absolutely essential in this, in this drawing, in this figure. And I could actually just leave it at that here. I don't want to even want to add too much more than that. One of the keys, not just looking at your structure, at your proportions, at your negative space, is always looking at light and shadow. So how are light and shadow working on this form? So that, to me, is probably the thing I look at the most. When I can spot it, when I can see it. And in this case, we have nice shadows. But I'm not going to work them in, into my line drawing. I'm going to work them when I begin to work the color. So here I go right into negative space. I want that nice expressive line. And I can also take a few risks. And by risks, I mean with some of these shapes... I could get a little bit stylistic. So I mentioned about adding a little bit of curvature to some of the lines, a little bit of length to some of those lines. That's where it kind of begins to look a little more like that fashion illustration. So once again, I'm looking at several things at the same time. I'm looking at relationships how things line up, so my shoulder, the big joints, negative space, lights and shadows, proportions, how things are relating in terms of verticals and horizontals, and really, really trying to simplify the lines of that negative space. So for example, here, going into the figure, really taking a quick look at how this shoe and this foot would look in, it's on a heel, basically, on heels, but totally in foreshortening. And that is just the right amount of information that you need to capture in order to convey that. And I could maybe add a little extra to back here, which is there looking a little more at negative space. How are these elements here? What's the distance between them? Do I see a shape? And I'm talking about, once again, negative space. Or that face face that we talked about earlier. And trying to just really capture that, the accuracy of it. And it just easily falls into place. Notice here we have this nice shape that begins to have those 
very, very peculiar curves. So learning how to see both positive and negative simultaneously in order for you to capture, to deliver that accuracy. Now with brush, sometimes you want to drag, pull, not push or stab. So you have to shift your posture a little bit in order to continue delivering some of that line. I could go into the figure here. Some of these lines will become essential to sort of convey the pose. Notice that just with a few lines here, in the direction, I could just deliver what would seem, what we would all recognize as a hand. the posture of a hand, the position of the hand. Looking again for more clues, more relationships, or right here, beautiful negative space. Once again, have this nice shape of negative space that is just very easy to read, and everything else just falls into place. Looking at the outside of it, there we have it. Now, once we get into detail here, I want a couple of points kind of to mark where these things begin, the kind of the direction of them, and where they end. Another type of line, very squiggly. And I actually want to use some ink because there's a lot of shadow here. So I'm going to use a lot of darker squiggly lines just to try to capture the fabric, the look of it. So I actually feel like I'm writing cursive or something like that. So it gets a lot darker here. And it might break up a little bit up here at the top. have a nice, again, read of a line. I'm going to go ahead and bring in the ink and just kind of wash a little bit of color. and use that same dry brush to create texture. Now, you may see this and you, oh, well, there's still a lot to go. Make sure you're using, if you're using a brush that is ink specific, just for ink, you wanna make sure you wash that properly in order to take good care of it. Now. We want to make sure that some of this ink here is fully dry before we were to add any color. And the kind of color that I want to add here is going to be very light. There's already good contrast. I'm kind of mixing a little bit of a red with somewhat of an orangey color. I'm just going to test that somewhat pinkish color here. Just a little more red. Make sure my ink is dry. Now I want to make sure I see that light shadow so there's color that is darker. It's still the same color. It's just darker on one side, which is that shadow side. Oops, there's some of that ink that wasn't dry, fully dry, and darker. where we have it against the light. Just using a little bit of water. A 
Now, you may like this technique. This may look... Oh, no, it's a little sloppy. His ink just got all grayish and dirty. It is a style that, yeah, you would have to wait pretty fully until it's guaranteed dry before you were at to add any wet media, unless you wanted to have this kind of look where you could kind of read the shadows a little more realistically. I'm actually enjoying that. I'm actually liking the look just with the color of the ink. And so I'm adding a little, just a little more kind of grayish brown to enhance it. And for skin tone, I'm gonna go with just a lighter shade. Same thing, I'm gonna look for lights and shadows. Now this is going to be tricky because if the ink is not fully dry, it could get messy. So once again, looking at what's light, what's dark, what's in the shadows, here in the face, very important. It'll resolve lots of detail with very, very simple brush strokes without having to add too much information same goes for here if we see it in the shadow and then just wash the color with a little water One very dark in the shadow, the other very light in the sunlight. And I might add a little color to the shoes here, just to create a little contrast, a little pop. Bringing up a little more shadow in the face. And the ideal way for this is to wait and layer as it fully dries. If I were to add some red there, it's going to just spill all over. Yep, it does. It, it actually... So bringing in a little extra patience here. And there we have it. So these are three very quick and also very different approaches to what could be easily sketched figures in clothing to create your own style. So next week, we're going to begin to go into different fashion styles and also around the world as we go to week three and week four we'll look at different styles around the world so i hope you guys enjoyed it